Beyond a spate of extravagant new skyscrapers, there's something else striking about Mumbai's skyline. Zombie towers scattered around the city, expensive, unfinished projects that have been delayed and marred by legal conflicts. Often covered in scaffolding, these half-built towers provide a clear illustration of the challenges of constructing tall buildings in what should be the fast-changing urban landscape of India's financial capital. Constructing almost anything in India is very difficult. We have low construction costs on which the economics of the projects are based and we have uh, a situation of a supply chain which is not fully evolved or reliable and consequently the construction management and project management become much more challenging. Specifically in Mumbai are the fact that the regulations have you know, sort of been recently amended about three years ago to make them more transparent and more, uh, more straightforward. These issues have been heightened as India's economic growth slowed in recent years. Property demand in Mumbai has declined, while developers, many in financial difficulties, have delayed new building launches. But the gap between demand and supply remains steady, and unsold inventory is piling up. Beyond property demand, many projects are stalled by Mumbai's convoluted planning laws, which impose strict height limits, and the city's poor infrastructure, which struggles to support a high-density urban environment. We are developing uh, safeguards, laws, uh, environmental issues, firefighting. All these are uh, coming into play when taller and taller buildings are being built. What we are seeing is the first time that there is a bit of a conflict between the intention to build as much as one can, almost at a laissez-faire level, and the restrictions of the state which are coming uh, in confrontation with each other. These delays have been worsened by a crackdown on the loopholes used by many developers that have hit a number of prominent buildings, including this one behind me, belonging to a local industrialist which is intended to be his home. However, the chances are that, as with much else in India, wealthy property developers or prominent tycoons will eventually be able to build the buildings that they want once the fines and other penalties have been paid. James Crabtree, The Financial Times in Mumbai.